Welcome to all you wonderful boys and girls to this another poetry session. Now writing poems is one of the most enjoyable forms of writing that is used to express your thoughts and feelings freely. It allows the creative use of words and the use of rhymes and rhythm to express those feelings. We have looked at the basic elements of poetry as well as how to write two of the shortest types of poems, the limerick and the haiku. Remember, a limerick poem is a nonsense poem with five lines. In this poem, there is the use of rhyming words, but the rhyme follows a specific rhyme pattern, where lines one, two, and five must rhyme, and lines three, and four are usually shorter lines, but must rhyme with each other. It must be noted that line five must refer to line one. The haiku is a lyrical unrhymed poem of Japanese origin with 17 syllables, arranged on three lines with a syllable count of five, seven, five, which means there should be five syllables in the first line, seven syllables in the second line, and five syllables again in the third line. Now, when a poet writes a poem, they are usually focused on a main idea. They want you to understand something or they're trying to send a message to you. The area of focus or the message is referred to as the theme. We can say, that the theme in a poem is the big idea of the text. It is the idea or lesson that the author wants you, the reader, to know from reading the poem. It is also important to note at this point that the theme is not usually one word but expressed in a sentence. In order to identify the theme, you have to focus on determining the tone and the mood of the poem in each stanza. As long as you understand what is written in each stanza, you must use that evidence to find the overall big idea or the theme of the poem. The theme or central idea can either be stated directly or indirectly, or as we say, implicitly or explicitly which simply means that you can easily see it or understand it or you need to read between the lines. Remember, we did our lesson on inferencing, okay? Reading between the lines to get the meaning. Now, there are four questions that we could ask as we try to identify the theme of a poem. What are the explicit themes? In other words, what topics do you see in the poem on the first read-through? As you read the poem for the first time, what things come to your mind? What things speak to you through the words? The next question, what is the poem's overall tone? Here we are looking at what thoughts or emotions does the poet convey? What images are used? How those reveal the poet's feelings towards the subject matter? The next question, what is the poem's overall mood? How does the poem make you feel as you read? What effect does the poem's tone, setting, and the word choice have on you? Does it make you feel happy? Does the poem have a happy mood, a sad mood, a frightening mood? What is it? And then, what are the implicit themes? Now that you've considered the poem's tone and the mood, what other less obvious ideas have you discovered? Remember, this is where you use other words to help you to get other meanings. Now, other than asking those questions, you must ensure that you read the poem slowly and if you can, you try reading it out loud. You also try to identify characters, plot, and literary devices such as similes, metaphors, personification, and others in the poem. 
Once you have read and understand the poem, try to put the poem in your own words. This will help you to further clarify the meaning of the poem. Now, you try to identify the main idea or the message of the poem. This can be expressed in one or two short sentences. Here I have a short poem that we're going to try to analyze and see if we could figure out what is the central idea or the theme. This poem is entitled Dreams by Langston Hughes. Hold fast to dreams, for if dreams die, life is a broken winged bird that cannot fly. Hold fast to dreams, for when dreams go, Life is a barren field frozen with snow. So, let's analyze this poem to figure out the theme. Here we see the title is Dreams. We see the word dreams being used repeatedly, but is that the theme? What about the literary devices? If you look in stanza 1, lines 3, you see the sentence, life is like a broken winged bird. Here we see the comparison of life to a bird with broken wings. What about stanza two? It begins with the same first line, but now it says, if dreams go, life is a barren field. So here we can say that the message is to ensure that you have dreams, but are we looking at dreams you have at night? No, we are talking about aspirations and goals, things that you want to achieve. The theme is setting goals and aspirations in order to have a good life. I have another short poem that we are going to look at, The Voice. There is a voice inside of you that whispers all day long. I feel that this is right for me. I know that this is wrong. No teacher, preacher, parent, friend, or wise man can decide what's right for you. Just listen to the voice that speaks inside. Very short and interesting poem, The Voice. Now when we look at this poem, it starts by talking about the voice that speaks to you. Is it the voice of a person? No, it says it's a voice inside of you. So here we are speaking about thoughts, our knowledge of what is right and wrong. The poet in this short poem is reminding us that we have to take and make our own decisions, but we must think carefully about them. There may be many influences that can sway and change one's behavior, but in the end, only you are able to make the right decisions for yourselves. You see the part where it says, no teacher, no preacher, parent, friend, or wise man can decide. So the theme in this poem is that no matter what situation you are in, you must base your decision solely on what you think is best for you. Okay, pupils, now remember that when we are talking about the theme of a poem, we are referring to the message or the central idea that the poet wants us to understand. In order for us to understand the theme, we have to carefully read and analyze the poem by looking at the words used as well as the literary devices such as similes, metaphors, personification. Remember also that the poet will use words to set a particular tone and mood. And while some themes are clearly stated, some of them are implied, and so you have to read carefully. Now, while the poem may present a number of topics, the theme is expressed in a sentence. This is all from me for this lesson. Now you think about the lesson or message you want to share and write your own poem. Goodbye until next time.